Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Viewers, good morning. You are welcome to this morning devotion. As with you are listening, may the Lord bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we appreciate you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your protection. Thank you for this privilege you have given unto us. Father, thank you for all that you have been doing in our lives. May your name be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, you are welcome. This morning, we shall be discussing the topic, the day of the Lord, being Thursday, 10th of September, 2020. The text is in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 10 to 21, I read. The whole land from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, will become like the Arabah, but Jerusalem will be raised up and remain in its place. From the Benjamin Gate to the site of the first gate to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel to the royal wine presses, it will be inhabited. Never again will it be destroyed. Jerusalem will be secure. This is the plague with which the Lord will strike all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are still standing on their feet, their eyes will rot. In their, uh, in their sockets, and their tongues will roll in their mouths. On that day, men will be striking by the Lord with great panic. Each man will seize the hand of another, and they will attack each other. Judah, too, will fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the surrounding nations will be collected, great quantities of gold and silver and clothing. A similar plague will strike the horses and mules, the camels and donkeys, and all the animals in those camps. Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. If the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations that do not go up to celebrate the feast of the Manacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the feast of Tabernacles. On that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. Every pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord Almighty, and all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Once again, our topic for discussion this morning is the day of the Lord, Jerusalem number two. I read, the new city Jerusalem, as promised in today's passage, shall be free from war, attack and destruction, because it is founded by the Lord Jesus. In it, there won't be any jot of sin or anything that works corruption. It will be a complete holy city of God, according to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Jerusalem has been, from time immemorial, honored as the city of God and the focal point of the entire world's worship. No wonder people from all walks of life will always go to Jerusalem to perform their holy pilgrimage. Alas, no matter how decent, amusing and fascinating this earthly Jerusalem may seem, its beauty cannot be compared with the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. According to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2, it is 
a glorious home we all as Christians wish to inherit. Everyone except sinners is welcome in the New Jerusalem and all people is not lost on such sinners in as much as they have repented from their sins while on earth. There is no repentance beyond here. And unfortunately, tomorrow is promised to no man. Repent today so you can be part of this glorious new Jerusalem. When you look at the book of Zechariah chapter 14 and Matthew chapter 24 and Mark chapter 13, they are all talking about the great day of the Lord. That is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Looking at Zechariah chapter 14 verse 1, it shows the day of the Lord is the day of victory. I will read verse 1 and 3 only. A day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided among you. Verse 3. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. Once again, if you look at uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 and 20, it says, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had uh, deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. That is the day of the Lord is the day of victory. That is, when Jesus Christ will come, he will capture the devil and the beasts, and he will put them in the lake of fire. Jesus will have victory. Even that they gather to fight against him, he will fight against them and he will become victorious. That is what we saw in Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 and 20. Therefore, my brethren, you need to rise up, tighten up your belt, and fight against the sin, the wall, and the devil, so that on the day of the Lord, you will become a victor. Fear Lord to, to do this, uh, my friend, my brother, and my sister, you will be a loser. And for you to be a loser, you will be in trouble. You better to you better you better you better rise up and tighten up your belt and fight against the sin, the war, and the devil. They are the enemies of your soul. As the enemies of Jesus fought against him and he fought them back and he had victory over them, that is what you need to do. You have to carry, you have to take up all the spiritual weapons to fight against the sin, the war, and the devil. The day of the Lord is like a thief in the night. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 36, in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 7, and 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, they are all saying, the day of the Lord is like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord is a unique day. The day that nobody knows. The day that nobody will understand. Even the angels in heaven, they don't know. Only the Father in heaven knows the day. Nobody knows the hour. Therefore, the day of the Lord is like that. Therefore, I pray around my sister, you need to know that the day when the day of the Lord shall come, you don't know. You don't know whether it is in the night. You don't know whether it is in the morning. You don't know whether it is in the afternoon. You don't know whether it is on Thursday. We don't know whether it is on Friday. Nobody knows the hour, nor the, nor the day. What you need to do is to get ready, to prepare yourself for that day, to cleanse yourself, to take yourself away from sin. Therefore, you need to be ready for the day because your life may be in danger. Since you don't know the day, you don't know the hour, you don't know the time. Therefore, you have to be ready, you have to be prepared. 
Also, the day of the Lord is a day of destruction. According to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 10 to 15, it says, there will be a war on earth. You know, when there is a war, everything will be destroyed. You see houses being destroyed, you see wealth, you see cars, you see lives, you see everything will be destroyed. Therefore, the day of the Lord is a day of destruction, that everything in this world, everything on this earth will be destroyed. And then there will be great earthquake. You know, when there is earthquake, everything will be scattered. Everything will be destroyed. Therefore, viewers, you need to know that on that day, there will be destruction. Everything will be destroyed. Nothing will remain on earth. Therefore, you need to be ready. You need to be prepared before this day of destruction when the Lord will destroy the whole world because this, the world has seen and there is going to be a day that the Lord has prepared to destroy everything. The Lord will destroy even you if you have not repented from your sin. Therefore, you need to understand the day of destruction is coming. A day of the Lord it's a day of separation. In Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13, it shows that the Lord will, the Lord will distinguish between believers and unbelievers. Likewise, it happens when the Lord inflicted or the Lord sent a plague in Egypt. The plagues only affected the Egyptians. Well, the Hebrew people were safe. And on that day, the day of the Lord, on the day of separation, on the day of division, because the day will be like uh, a shepherd separate between the sheep and the goats. That's what the Bible says. On that day, the, the, the children will be separated from the parents because the parents if the parents committed sin, they will be separated. If the parents, if the children committed sin, they will be separated. Therefore, the Bible says the goats will be on the left hand side, while the sheep will be on the right hand side. And those that are on the left hand side will be destroyed, will be, will, 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 will be destroyed, will be perished. They will, they will be put, they will be thrown in the lake of fire. Therefore, my brothers, you need to know the day of the Lord is a day of separation. Everything, everybody will be separated between the good and the evil will be separated. Between the gods and the sheep will be separated. Between the sinners and the righteous people will be separated. While the separated people will go to their destinations, the evil one will go to the, 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 go to, go to the lake of fire, while the righteous people will go to the new Jerusalem. Therefore, we need to know, we need to get Get ready for this coming day. A day of the Lord is a day of trouble. In Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. I read, The great day of the Lord is near is near and coming quickly. Listen, the cry on the day of the Lord will be bitter. The shouting of the warrior here. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of disaster and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified fortified cities and against the corner towers will bring distress on the people and they will walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their entrance like filth. 
neither their silver nor their gold would be able to save them. On the day of the Lord's wrath, in the fire of his jealousy, the whole world will be consumed, for he will make a sudden end of all who live in the, in, in, in the earth. So the day of the Lord is a day of trouble, the day of cry, the day of bitterness, the day of the, the day of blind, the people who walk like blind people, the day of trouble, the sinners will cry, the sinners will be in trouble, the sinners will be in darkness, the sinners will, in fact, the sinners will cry. You need to repent because the time is coming. The day of the Lord is a day of trouble. You can see that Zechariah called the Israelite homeless and futureless ruined exile people. Why? Because even nowadays many people are in exile because their lives or they live far from God. Their plans, their thoughts and everything they do is far from the Lord. Sinners are called to repentance so that they can enter into the new Jerusalem promised by God according to Revelation chapter 21 verse um, 1 and 2. The city that will be the city that there will be no evil, that's the new Jerusalem. Sinners are called to repentance so that they can find themselves in this new city. The city that there will be no evil, there will be no corruption, no kidnappers, no Boko Haram, no, no, no coronavirus. In fact, no evil shall be in that new city. My brother, my sister, can you afford to lose? Can you, can you afford to miss this new Jerusalem? I think you don't need to miss this new Jerusalem. You need to get ready. You need to prepare yourself for the day of the Lord so that at the end you can find yourself in the new Jerusalem. Thank you. Let us, let, 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 let us pray. Lord Jesus, count me worthy in your kingdom, the new Jerusalem. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you for your word. Help us, Lord, that in our worldly pilgrimage, may we be able to enter into the new Jerusalem. Every hindrances, every obstacles on our way, Father, we pray that you remove them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you answer our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.